Warning. This program may contain material of an explicit or graphic nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Casting Undead from the B-Ward, this is the Postmortem Show. I'm Dom. And I'm JD. And today, we're going to bring you something near and dear to our hearts. Awkward Boners! Boy, <laughs> what? The top five awkward boners yeah. in horror. We're bringing in a new, a new uh, segment for the show, too. We are. Reanimated Reviews. Reanimated Reviews. We're going to be uh, taking movies that have been remade or rebooted... Watching the original, watching the remake and reboot, and doing a side-by-side comparison. Which one holds up? Which one's better? Or do they both pass? You be the judge. Ixnay. We be the judge. Jury and executioner. Judge, jury, and sexecutioner. I am the law. Today, sexecutioner in the awkward boners. <laughs> but before... Sounds like a, sounds like a Guar spinoff band. <laughs> like, a, like a Guar spinoff doo-wop band. Yeah. <laughs> But before we get into some awkward boners and some reanimated reviews, we got a little bit of horror news. Horror news. Let's hit the bad news yeah, first we'll, before we get to the good news. We'll start news. with the bad. As you may have heard in the beginning of this episode, unless you don't listen to things until after the music starts, uh, this, edi- this episode is dedicated to Brandy Petrie, also known as Amira LaVey. Star of the first three Vomit Gore films of Lucifer mm-hmm. Valentine. Uh, sadly, she was killed on September 1st. Uh, she and her friend Avery Lively Fleischer were shot early in the morning about 5.30 a.m. on September 1st uh, by someone named Travis McPhail. What a name. Yeah. yeah but uh, Brandy died on the scene and uh, her friend later died in the hospital. Uh, police do have McPhail in custody uh, and are charging him. Uh, however, they have not released the motive for the shooting at this point. Yeah, it's just sad news. I mean, she definitely, uh, you know, in those movies, she she's a star. She was by far the star. Yeah, she movies. was absolutely. I mean, Lucifer Valentine's worked with some other when great people. When it comes people, to Chelsea making Chainsaw, prairie organic you know, spirits, a misery, the hard you know, all these other people the he's worked way. with. But Amira Corn comes from 100% like family owned organic farms. Yeah, and, uh, and she was such a fearless performer. Just like the madness that she was able to make. And, 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 and it wasn't just that like she looked at on camera and let weird shit be done to her. There was like a real raw Because quality that's for sure. And, you know, being a relationship we have with the man Experience. Quality when the bug is the film, gin, of which she was the right star, way. you know, hit us pretty close, and yeah. uh, you know, I've seen him post some things that are pretty, you know, he's he's having a rough time. Yeah, he's, he's a human being. Yeah. Under, underneath the, the the vomit and the piss and the blood, there's a there's a human being with an actual heart and soul in there. So our our condolences go to him and and you know Brandy's family yeah. and, and you know anyone who knew her was lucky enough to work with her. Yep. So that's definitely shitty news. Uh, but condolences to Hank Skinny. We condolences can't leave Hank to the octopus itself. Yeah, the octopus. Yeah. But you know, we gotta kind of put a positive spin on things. Let's go somewhere that's a little bit a lighter side. Let's right. go to the lighter side of okay. horror news. So, the new It movie, which we are going to be talking about in the first ever reanimated reviews, has broke box office records. Not just, shattered them. Not just for horror. For R-rated movies, yep. in the September release, 137 million opening weekend. Be- beat Paranormal Activity three, beat Deadpool, yeah, beat all the big, the big money R-rated movies. Definitely, and uh, we're going to get into what we think about the movie when we get to animated re- reviews. But you can look at this one or two ways. Now that's going to fuel the fucking remake engine even mm-hmm. more. 
I don't think so, though. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to prove that horror movies do have a place. That hard R horror movies. Hard R horror movies yeah. do have an audience. Yeah, absolutely. If the production on this movie and the promotion of this movie was exactly what it needed to be. They put $35 million behind the film. Yeah. They got their money back tenfold. Absolutely. You know, when it's all said and done, they're going to have millions and millions of dollars profit on this fucker. So hopefully... That's like almost Star Wars money. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't <laughs> fuel a bunch of shitty remix trying to grab a buck. Yeah. I'm hoping it uh, puts money behind our fucking genre, which we know and love so much. Yeah. Maybe so movies. people like Stephen Byro can actually get some big money to make movies. Yeah, or, for sure. You know, if they weren't were brave enough to give money like that to Lucifer Valentine or give Michael Flanagan a fucking real big budget movie that he could do. Yeah. Definitely. I really think that that's what's going to happen. Um, I'm, that's what I'm choosing to believe, you know? Yeah. That hopefully we get what we deserve. We yeah. get some fucking real budgets, not all CGI bullshit. Yeah. Well, and it, it looks like, especially with, like, the mummy tanking, that, like, usually if, they, if they're if they not sure if a horror movie is going to sell, they make it a supernatural action movie. Yeah. And with the mummy tanking and, you know, a couple other things that have come out recently tanking, like... I think that's a sign that people are sick of that shit. Yeah, and they want real bullshit. horror. Yeah, if you, you can't give an action movie with a horror fucking element to diehard horror fans, yeah. you know, I don't want to see that shit. I don't mm-hmm. want to see Tom Cruise, Scientologist ass, bumping around in a plane. <laughs> yeah, I, I like some horror action movies, but it's been done to death. Yeah, they, there's nothing new that that's been offered, and until they can offer something new, it's just going to continue. It to just be the goes same to show, shit. though, with with this movie that it doesn't have to be something new. Mm-hmm. Like it, this wasn't a revolutionary concept making Stephen King's it yeah. into a movie. No, but. It was so super well done, the promotion and shit. Yeah. We're not talking about the movie, we're going to get into that. Yeah. But like the way it, you know, it had an audience before it even came out. Yeah. I had to wait in a fucking massive line of people who even had tickets already. Wow. To get into the movie on opening night. Wow. It was stretched all around the fucking mall. Yeah, I, I went in... And on... it sold out, even my son saw it the next day, uh-huh. in the 445... Sold out at like two when he went in to buy wow. tickets. I saw a twelve thirty showing on Friday. I breezed into the fucking theater. Really? Walked right in. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but uh, maybe you know, just because it was twelve thirty. It, it was a Friday yeah. matinee, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the marketing on this was flawless. It was, and, and 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 it was really kind of a throwback to like how they used to market movies in the fifties. You know where they would you know, go places. When it comes with to it, making like prairie or organic places, spirits, yeah. you know have the little reminders of it here the and there. Yeah, yeah. And our corn comes it went from viral, viral, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. organic farms. But this is kind of so. I want to give you the good news, you know. So Nurture that's good news for you. Whether it's a bunch of re- remakes and shit like that, I want to get into the good news first. But I do have a part for you. Oh, yeah. because quality okay. that's handmade on the farm is better in every way. You know, Prairie or bring the mood up a little bit. Quality vodkas and gin yeah, it's exactly made the right. right way. And then we'll bring it up even higher with the fact that did you know there was a 1990s TV series in India based on it? It doesn't surprise me. They do. They rip off everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Dairy Maine wasn't the only one to have the wrath of Pennywise, but it was like Penny Raj. <laughs> <laughs> Penny Raj, the Maharaja. <laughs> Look at this picture right here. Wow. That's Pennywise. That's a, that's a clown that'll rape the shit out of you, though. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, the IT TV series in India was, whoa, W-O-H. Okay. And it's still centered around the clowns, the, you know, Pennywise terrorizing the kids and stuff, but with a total Bollywood approach. Right. And it's gloriously fucking stupid. You have to watch it. It's on YouTube? It's on YouTube, yeah. You can watch, it's a TV series, you can watch... There's 52 episodes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus fuck. Yeah, 52 episodes. You can watch episode one on YouTube. Just search for WOH episode one. Is it subtitled? Uh, yeah, it's subtitled on YouTube, and it's pretty fucking silly. Yeah, there's, you know, like, in in India and in, like, places like Turkey, the reason they're allowed to make these, like, their versions of it is because copyright law works different there. Yeah. And so, like, there's a Turkish exorcist movie called Satan, S-E-Y-T-A-N. And it's like the crazy fucking Turkish version of The Exorcist. You just gotta ch- but, call it a different name and yeah. you can just steal it. Uh, Tur- Turkey's an atheist country and it's actually against the law to make anything that's deemed religious propaganda. So they couldn't, they had to remake The Exorcist, but they had to make it not religious propaganda. So the girl got possessed by a cat demon. And as opposed to turning into this, like, you know, vomiting, green, disgusting monster, she started turning more and more into a cat. 
and in like the very beginning of the movie, the priest shows up to try to exercise her and just fucking gets his ass handed to him. <laughs> and then the rest of the time, it was like logic and science scaring out the cat demon. Does the does the cat like spray him? <laughs> <laughs> just throws sh- sh- shitty cat litter in their face. Just that spray, you know, cats yeah. have a piss yeah. spray that's kind of like a skunk when yeah. they're scared. Smells terrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, something that I saw when I went to go see it that interested me was the preview for Darren Aronofsky's new movie that's coming out called Mother. Hits theaters September 5th, and the description is a couple's relationship is tested when uninvited guests arrive at their home, disrupting their tranquil existence. It's pretty vague. But the movie looks like a home invasion plot with a supernatural twist. It stars Jennifer Lawrence, a gleefully insane Javier Bardem, Ed Harris, and Michelle Pfeiffer making the return to the screen after a four-year hiatus. And her vagina. Yeah. She's going to uncross her legs and there's just going to be a fucking gaping maw. With tentacles coming out of it. (laughs) (laughs) That's a pretty all-star cast. Yeah, and the the movie, the preview, like, I, I saw, like, a poster for it at the theater, and I was like, oh, what the fuck is this? I didn't even know it was Darren Aronofsky. Yeah, with the exclamation point yeah. stuff. It seems like it would be Nicholas Winding reference yeah. where the poster looks like. Yeah, but then the preview hit, and I was like, I was hooked. I was like, I yeah. want to see this. It looks really good. It I mean, any, any excuse to see Javier Bardem lose his shit, yeah. I'm down with. Um, but Darren Aronofsky has not made a movie that I didn't like. I mean, he even took Black Swan and made ballet interesting. I don't give a shit about ballet. I like a lot of his movies. Uh, Black Swan, it just didn't get me like it should have. Mm. It just kind of dragged a little too long. But that being said, he is very talented. And mm. I will watch anything he makes. Yeah, the, the Fountain is his movie that I liked the least because I thought it meandered a little bit too much. Actually, I've never seen that one. But so. it was still it was still good. Like, okay. When his worst movie is still better than most of the shit that's out there, um, that's definitely a director worth paying attention to. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, I'm going to be checking out Mother. As are you. Just don't check out my mother, or I'll have to stab you. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <come> Damn! <on. laughs> that was going to be my question after the show. <laughs> um, JD, I was thinking, you know. <laughs> I fought bears. Yeah? I fought off bears what a lot if, bigger and meaner than you. What if I offer you a suitable dowry? We'll talk after like, the show. Like six kegs of beer and a sheep. We'll talk after the show. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Coming... To the New York Comic Con, Sunday, October 8th, a special sneak preview of the new x file season with Chris Carter, David Duchovny, Jillian Anderson, and Mitch Pelleggi. Wow. All in appearance at the New York Col- nice. Comic Con. And they have it in the can. It's going to be coming January 2018. Sweet. That's soon. Yeah. It's like four or five months from now. Yeah. And one month from now, October 8th. Mm-hmm. Um, when I went to, uh, after I saw it, I went to Barnes and Noble to get the book because I haven't read it since I was 12 and I smoked a lot of weed since between now and then. So I couldn't really remember. Got deleted. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't really remember what was book and what was miniseries. You know what? You know what my memory's like now? Huh? Like at first with all the chair shots and like concussions and stuff like that, yeah, I have gaps and stuff. But you know when you have a VHS tape and you put it like in EP mode where you can record like three movies on one tape? Yeah. And then you record over that tape again like that. And yeah. then you record over that tape again like that. And things kind of drop times. in and out. That's my memory. Yeah. Yeah. That's scary. Be kind. Please rewind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but while I was at Barnes & Noble, um, they had a bunch of X-Files books there. And they had X-Files children's books with Child Scully and Mulder. Whoa, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I gotta get those for my kids. Yeah, yeah. Kaylee loves the X-Files. She's watched the whole... I think she's watched the whole thing up until fucking T2000 comes nice. in. Nice. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pick it up for Sabrina. Elijah would probably be scared of it still, but I think Sabrina's... Because she wants to like know about aliens and Freddy Krueger and stuff. So yeah. I think that would be a good you know in- introduction to the world of the macabre and Just crazy. show her Fire in the Sky and Communion. Yeah. Like, this is a documentary. Actually, what I'm, what I'm going to do is... <laughs> this I'm gonna, really happened I'm, with a documentary. I'm going to make a, uh, a flying saucer out of two pie tins, and then put, like, a little portable TV screen on top of it, and show regurgitated sacrifice on it, and be like, this is what Aliens is all about. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah. yeah. So, do you have anything else you want to say about X-Files? Nope, I'm good. Uh, Dark Sky Pictures has created a 4K re-release of Toby Hooper's 1974 genre-defining classic, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and is doing an old-style tour with the film in select cities throughout the United States and Canada. The tour has already started, 
It will be going through November 2nd. The film will be screened at conventions, a few legendary theaters, beginning in Illinois and ending in Portland, Oregon, over Halloween weekend. Uh, the full list of dates is, and locations is available on both Bloody Disgusting and Dark Sky Films' Facebook page. But they're actually putting the movie in the can, quote-unquote, and sending a guy to these individual theaters. That's pretty show awesome. Them. Like, like how they used to show movies way back in the day. You know, that's the only... Okay, this is... We're going to get into our review of it. Both the, the marketing that it had, like you said, with the, the balloons and stuff, right? Yeah. They can afford to dress up a guy like Pennywise and... For a hundred bucks on the eight o'clock and nine o'clock screenings or whatever, yeah, you know what I mean. I, just get a bum and have him come in dressed like a clown. Just yeah, I'd be all, horror fucking fans would be down to do that. Yeah, I'd do it for know? free. Yeah, I would too. So they so could have done that. My beard. They could have done that right <laughs> when he jumps out. The fucking Pennywise rises up and scares everyone from in between the handicap row and the other row. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. so scare all the handicap people. No, behind <laughs> behind the handicap. You row. know, you could do that. And you could pop up doing pirouettes and pissing, like dress like Pennywise from the waist up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm down, actually. Yeah. I'm gonna. Act, well, we have to have. We have to have both, though. I'll yeah. Do that in the upper section, and you go to the handicap section, and I'll will your Pennywise ass in. Okay. That's cool. I'll be the handicap Pennywise. Yeah. All right. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> we float down here. <laughs> there you go. Float. Beep, beep, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> and then Richie's just like, man, there's Pennywise again. I feel so bad. Yeah, we beat the shit out of him last time, and now look at him. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking slingshot to the face. <laughs> Boom! Light coming out of him. <laughs> and brain cells. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my last bit of horror news is real life news. So, a 54-year-old set of conjoined twins from Michigan are facing each other in court as one of the siblings is contesting his brother's right to engage in sexual acts without his consent. <laughs> Siamese twins, are they're suing each other over the right not to have sex, but to masturbate. Wow. The, one of the Siamese twins is saying his brother's touching him. And the other one is saying, like... So do they share like, a penis? Here's a, here's, here's a quote. He keeps playing with our penis without my consent. That's a, legally a sexual assault. I don't want to sleep at night because I'm afraid he's going to touch me. <laughs> you want to see the picture of these guys? They look like the dude from... Uh, uh, what the fuck is that Mike Judge movie that takes place in The Office? It's made deeply. Yeah, it looks like that guy. What, what Office Space. Office Space, yeah. yeah. It looked like the dude from Office... The state board dude from Office Space. But with no mustache. And, yeah. And the glasses are definitely perv glasses. Where is their penis? I don't know. Their stomachs are connected. Yeah. Maybe it's underneath it. That's fucking weird. It is what it is. So, there. So, is, is I wonder. Like Flint, the, Michigan courts have taken this as a real lawsuit. This is, um, this is going to set precedent because who knows? Is that rape if you share a penis? It doesn't set precedence because according to U.S. courts, the only state to have a law concerning the sexuality of conjoined twins is California, which passed a bill... In 2011, regarding conjoined twin sex. What did it say? Just give me one second to look it up as you keep talking about the subject. <laughs> so if these guys share a penis, it looks like, because the way they're conjoined, it looks like they probably have their own sets of organs, like their own kidneys and stuff. Like, I wonder if they have to piss on different schedules and if they have days where they're just pissing all day long. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to get it because it's... Uh... It's coming up with a bunch of bullshit, uh, TLC shows and right. stuff like that. That's a show that I want to watch. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> <laughs> One penis and counting. You, you know, I, I, you know. One what, penis and counting. The story of time. <laughs> what, 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 what the brother that keeps masturbating should do just to fuck with the other one is like while he's jerking off, make eye contact with him and start singing. Just the two of us. <laughs> we can make it if we try. He's like, you know what? You know what makes this whole situation even worse? I can't feel it. I'm just touching you. <laughs> I get no pleasure out of this. I'm violently beating off. I'm making hate to you, twin. Just the control. I'm going to make hate to you, twin. <laughs> I just like the way I feel when I stare into your eyes and you're terrified. <laughs> I just want to wipe those tears off your face and lube up with them. <laughs> Spit on it! Spit on it! <laughs> He's like, guess what? 
Yeah, I was doing it, and I can't feel it. But guess what? You got a little dick. I don't got a dick. Your dick's tiny. <laughs> so you know, usually when like multiple people jerk off, it's a circle jerk. If it's like, if it's two, if it's Siamese twins, that's like a parallel jerk. You know, it's like Stranger Things. It's like the upside down jerk. <laughs> There's two dimensions. <laughs> two dimensions. One dick. Only one will survive. Maybe the other twin is, is concerned that like. If he masturbates to completion, all of reality will collapse because of the paradox it will create. <laughs> That's our rating system. Siamese masturbatory paradoxes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Done. <laughs> So that's it for Horror News. You got anything else? <laughs> no, that's enough. I think that's plenty. So, <laughs> again, our thoughts are with you, Lucifer Valentine, and the Marilyn Vay's family. And so. if you happen to be listening to this episode, we hope you can at least get a laugh out of it. Yeah. We, we sure hope so. And if not, you know, I'll, I'll personally come over and let you beat me off as you stare into my eyes with nothing but hatred. <laughs> I, I think he should take you up on that offer either way. <laughs> 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 We'll be back with our top five awkward boners. It's fitting. <laughs> it's very fitting. And the first ever reanimated reviews after this. Hi, thanks for listening to the Postmortem Podcast. If you want to support us, go to our website at www.postmortemshow.com and click the Amazon link. By clicking on the Amazon banner, Amazon will give a small percentage of the purchase price of your item back to the Postmortem Podcast at no additional cost to you. That's right. It doesn't cost you any money. We get money. You want us to keep doing this? You want more Doug Jones talk? You want more dick and fart talk? I don't care. We're going to do it. Fund our filthy, filthy habits. Yes, and you, they are many and they are fast. And most of them aren't legal. <laughs> Come on, don't be a dick. Give us money. We're back with our first ever reanimated reviews. Reanimated reviews. Brand new segment. Brand new segment? For a brand new day. A brand new day. New day rocks. And a new box office record. Fucking A. Because our first ever reanimated reviews is going to be comparing the 1990 miniseries of It to the 2017 theatrical release. Yeah. So, before we do this, like, the one thing that I want to clarify is that, like, a, a lot of people are, are anti remake or reboot. Yeah. And, like, I'm not because remakes and reboots have existed for as long as there have been horror movies. How many fucking Dracula movies were there before 1980? Yeah. But most of them suck, and dude. That's the thing. If the, if it's a shitty remake, then fuck that in the ass with a jackhammer until it's dead. But sometimes they're good. Yeah, and you know what? The thing about the segment, we're calling it Reanimator Views. This is our concept. We're going to do that with more remakes and yeah. such. But this, to me, this wasn't really a remake. Yeah. It was an adaptation of a movie, of a book of a that book. was way closer than the miniseries ever got. Yeah. So. And one thing that I'm not going to do with this one is I'm not going to compare it to the book too much because, as I said earlier in the episode, I don't remember the book all that well. Yeah, you know, we had, we're comparing it to the miniseries. That's yeah. all you can do. Yeah. You know, so. And we actually, last week, sat down and we each watched the miniseries. We did. And then we sat down in the theater and we watched the new version. Yeah, so we, we put a good uh, seven hours into it yeah. last week. Plus, a full work day. Plus, almost. I put a couple hours into reading the book. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, since the new it is only the kids' half of the story, we mm. will only be comparing the kids' portion of the miniseries, which is probably good for the miniseries because the kid portion holds up much more than the adult portion yeah, of the miniseries. The one thing I got to say about the adult portion of the miniseries is that, like, those adults were emotionally fucking labile as fuck. Not just, just that, but they swings. just... It was just stunt casting. Let's yeah. put John Ritter in this movie. Yeah. He's got a name. Yeah. He was horrible. Yeah. He had no place being... But we'll get into that if there is a part two, if they do release it, which they're going to. Yeah. We'll compare it to the adult portion. Yeah. So I'm not going to wax poetic about how bad the adults were in the original miniseries. Yeah. But. So the original miniseries, 1990, directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, starring Tim Curry... The kid from Sidekicks and Never Ending Story, Jonathan Brandis, Seth Green, and Emily Perkins from Ginger Snaps as Bev. Yeah. I never really realized that it was her. I had forgotten that Seth Green was in it, too. Yeah. But, 
So if we're just going to talk about these characters right here, if we're going to rate and compare the characters that I just listed, the main actors mm -hmm. from the original to current, I mean, Tim Curry as Pennywise, I loved Bill Skarsgård, mm -hmm. but he didn't have enough dialogue. I felt like he was more of a jump scare. The dialogue he did have was very good, mm -hmm. and he did a good job, but I would have to give that one to Tim Curry. You know, I... It, it's more the writing and directing fault that there wasn't a lot of Pennywise. Yeah. Um, and but I, it's better than yeah. the other movie. Like, yeah. it's a better made movie yeah. than the Be, miniseries. Well, was. also, they, they didn't show him too much, so it didn't, like, wear out the gimmick. Because here's the thing. I'm not going to shit on Tim Curry's performance, because Tim Curry's performance was excellent. Yeah. It was iconic. Yeah. It, it defined, you know, part of horror. Yeah. And so it, it was not bad, but when you watch it, when you watch... Tim Curry playing Pennywise, and you watch Bill Skarsgård playing Pennywise. Tim Curry was Tim Curry playing Pennywise. Yeah. That Bill Skarsgård was Pennywise. That's I didn't true. see anything but Pennywise on the screen. I, I, I would agree with that, yeah. And he is much more terrifying yeah. in the new version. Yeah. He, um, he, he's less quotable. Yeah. But maybe that maybe that's not necessarily the best part about playing him well is right. being iconic quotable. You yeah. know what I mean? That's like he is a he, he's a threat. Every time he's on screen, you feel like anyone could die. Yeah. Like he could kill it. He's very volatile compared to in the miniseries, he was always kind of taunting them, doing things to them, yeah. you know, but cuz he's laughing cuz he's a clown, but in the new one, he's more like I'm going to fucking kill you. Yeah. He he was a monster. And yeah. also because they gave Tim Curry's Pennywise so many one-liners and so many quotable things, I feel like it had the Freddy Krueger effect on him. Where yeah. it kind of made him wear thin a little less, bit. He's less scary because he's funny and you like him. Yeah. But that scene, I mean, if you're going to compare the scene with Georgie trying to get his boat, mm -hmm. they all float. And you all float too. The original, there, there was that power behind his voice. That was great. Bill Skarsgård, amazing. And the arm actually gets ripped off, which gave me yeah. a bunch of points. You know, But I didn't like the fact that Pennywise had these fucking teeth. Right in the front. And that was just like, oh, we're going to go like horror mainstream... We're going to give him this teeth that opens up like a fucking anglerfish mouth or something. Well, I, I liked the effect of the teeth coming out. What I didn't like was that he always had fangs in the front. Because that made it too obvious. Like, to me, even, I mean, even if a six-year-old... Like, if a six-year-old sees fangs, they're like, oh, I'm it, staying away from that. It was more of a mainstream thing, though, because like in the book, he viciously rips Georgie's arm off right. out of the socket with his hands. Yeah. Like, pulls it off. Yeah. And in this one, he sprouts fangs and bites it. Right. Which, it's... Yeah, it's scary, but like the the image in my head of like the bloody stump, you know, when with, with the it, bone sticking out, the little bit they, of bone sticking in, yeah. out, snapped. Like that's way scarier mm -hmm. than just it getting bitten off by a fucking shark because that's essentially he had shark teeth. Yeah. Well, know? what I did like about that effect though is when when the mouth came out, his whole facial skin loosened up. So like if you looked at his eyes, his eyes turned into like eye holes in a mask and went up a little bit and you would see like the red muscle like behind it. Like the real it. thing coming yeah. out. That was cool, but um, on, honestly, it was a little bit Beetlejuice soundworm. <laughs> <laughs> it was a yeah. much better version of it, but yeah. it kind of it was kind of like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that the adult one's just going to completely obliterate the, the other adult one because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a close running, but... We'll we'll get into it when we combine. So again, uh, Bill, the kid from Sidekicks and Never Any Story, Jonathan Brandis, child actor, mm -hmm. he's dead now. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Jonathan Brandis. Mm -hmm. Compared to the new Bill, new Bill's way better. I didn't like either one. <laughs> I compared yeah. to the book, like seriously, like Jonathan Brandis, you. You killed George. <laughs> you, you bastard. Yeah. It's like you killed Kenny, you bastard. Like, <laughs> I, I thought the exact same thing when he said know, that. Yeah. It's just not... It's way over the top, way over active. The new kid is not that much better, but he is better. His stutter was way better. I was a kid who stuttered. So, like, I'm always conscious of when they portray stuttering on things, because I know what it actually feels like and, and what it sounds like. And Jonathan Brandis' stutter was totally forced. Yeah. He was an actor playing Whoa. someone who stuttered. Whoa. This other kid, uh, whatever his name is, Jaden something or other, uh, he was his, his, he sounded like he was actually a stutterer. Yeah, uh, and, and he he conveyed that well. Well, those two, pretty close, right? Mm. Uh, Tim Curry, of course, iconic. Bill Skarsgård, great as well. Uh, like I said about the Bills, I didn't like either one of them. But if you take the last two, Seth Green and Emily Perkins, and compare them to the new Richie Tozer. Was fucking amazing. That kid from Stranger Things. Yeah, 
And he turned into a dork, and he had the, the best lines. He yeah. kind of like was a comedic relief because yeah. I love me some brutal horror, but you just need a little bit of that just it, once his, or twice in the movie. And now I'm like, going to kill this fucking clown line. Oh fuck! You know, like right before you get killed or yeah. something. You know, just something like some little. Give me a little bit of comedic. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I, I love it when they make him stay outside to watch, and they're like, and he's like, well, what do you do? What do I do if her dad shows up? What you always do? Talk. And as they're walking away, he's like, it is a gift, you know? Yeah. Like, just the, the, his delivery of the lines. Yeah. He must have had a... I, I don't know if he's like some sort of prodigy or if he had a really good coach, but like his his lines had like nuance yeah. to them. The way he actually says it too, not just what he's saying. Yeah. yeah he was really great. Where with one Seth of the best Green, parties. it was just what he was saying. Yeah. And it wasn't funny ever. Yeah. And he was very... With his fucking voices and stuff yeah. like that. I would say that Seth Green is closer to the book though. Yeah, very the new much. Kid. Uh, you know, Richie Tozer was not so likable right. in, like he was in, in the new one. So I'm still going to give it to the new one, though. Yeah. I think he was better. And then in terms Bev, of just comparing the movies, he was way more Yeah, Emily Perkins, um, I love Ginger Snaps, but the new Bev, like, Bev was always a ginger. She mm-hmm. always had that fiery red hair. Yeah, and the, that was the whole the point of the poem. The subplot with her and her dad yeah. and everything like that came across way more in this movie. Because oh, yeah. I don't think they could go there at the no, time, they you know? So it came across way better, and I, I, I liked her a lot more. And she, she seemed to convey actual fear in the scenes where she was supposed to be scared. Yeah. Like, the other the other girl, Ginger Snaps girl, she screamed, obviously, yeah. and she flailed, and, you know, blood was flying out of the sink everywhere and all that. But again, it was just, an, she was an actor acting. Yeah. Where all of these kids felt like actual kids who existed, you yeah. know, and you could identify with. Let's go to Stan. Jewish Stan. So much better than the Stan of old. Yeah. The Stan of old was like the biggest kid in the group yeah. in the miniseries. Looked the most physically imposing like he would be the one that wouldn't be the little bitch. Yeah. And this one looked way more Lahayam. Yeah. Lahayam sure. Stan. And the Stan was... He had the kind of smooth down fro. Yeah. He was, he was they put a yarmulke on him. I'm Put a fucking yarmulke yeah. on the kid. He's and the rabbi's great. son. And they also talked about how uh, Richie was Jewish too. Yeah. And it, it just had a whole other layer to it. That yeah. was really cool. What about Ben, the fat kid? Ben in this movie was way better. Much, much better. Yeah. Ben, and, ben in the original one had a swagger that I didn't like. When he walked, he walked like he thought he was a badass. Yeah. Ben in this movie was a little butterball pussy who liked new kids on the block. Um... Ben, I was going to say that Ben reminded me a lot of me when I was his age. <laughs> Did you like New Kids on the Block too? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought Ben was a lot like me. Yeah. A young JD. He had the right stuff. <laughs> young JD had the right stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> you know, okay, so now before we get to Ben and uh-huh. Mike Hamlin. Uh-huh. Uh, so Mike Hamlin, the black kid in the original one, and and the and especially... In the novel, was as much of a main character as Bill. That was something that I didn't like about this. And film. and this this is the major problem with this to me with this new one is that Ben was a historian in about the new Derry. one. Yeah, and Ben just moved to Derry. Yeah. What the fuck was that? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Oh, because he's trying to learn about the town. Yeah, maybe he got across. He's more of a dork. He's researching about the town. And he just moved to. But yeah. Mike Hamlin's plot was that his dad. Yeah, had the research. Yeah. And in, he's going to go on to become the librarian. Yeah. Mike Hamlin had no character development. In the no, movie. none. Well, you know, there there was the whole because they had, they added the whole subplot and the of actors work, too working uh, on the farm. And, yeah, you know, not wanting and the, to kill the sheep. and the thing yeah. like uh, instead of the slingshot, it was the thing that the kills air the cows gun, yeah. and shit. And, and that, that it just totally like killed it was, Mike. It, it was shoehorned in there to yeah. just have that when they could yeah. have had a fucking slingshot. Well, it's because it's not the fifties; it's the eighties. They wanted to modernize it, and yeah. I get that, but. They totally killed Mike Hanlon, yeah. and, and with this, you know, you got the two Jewish kids, you got the girl, you got the fat kid, you got the stutterer, mm-hmm. and the fact of that it's a losers club yeah. in the fifties with the racist things. That's why the black kid, even though he was fast and he was cool and he was awesome, yeah. he was in the losers and club smart. because of the racist yeah, and yeah. smart, yeah. you know. But in this one, he's just another kid, yeah. and he didn't he didn't get the treatment he deserved because yeah. like the the mine and the giant bird and shit like that. All he sees in the book, yeah, that's fucking awesome, yeah. and we didn't get any of that in the miniseries we didn't get any of that in this but at least the miniseries gave him his due yeah. you know so that i i would say that because ben usurped the role of mike hamlin i'll give ben a no even though he was me yeah i'll, I'll give i'll give the actor a yes and the writing a no yeah yeah and but mike was better yeah. so i think when you you combine all those factors it sounds like they're about equal but i just know that the adult portion is going to blow away the shit 
that we had to deal with before. Yeah. And I really liked this fucking yeah. movie. Th- there was also one other thing that I didn't like is that they rendered Beverly to a damsel in distress. Yeah, I didn't like that either. She and, was one of the boys. Yeah, and like in you know? the whole thing, like with the I like the whole was, slut shaming and stuff yeah, like that. That was cool, yeah, that but, was fine because that's in the book too. Yeah, but like the like it, it was important that she was the girl, but she was the good shot, and she was yeah. the one who was meant to kill Pennywise yeah. with, the, with the 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 silver, and they just totally fucking ruled that out. You know, and she was floating. Yeah, that's another thing too. The bad guys, Henry Browers and yeah. stuff like that. They fucked that up. Uh, Bell Chuggins and uh, Patrick Hawksetter. Yeah, minor, minor roles. And it needs to be Henry who sees the fucking lights. That's yeah, that's like the book. That's the, the only thing. Like when when it came down to the end of the movie, that's where the other movie had more of it right. Yeah, although it was not right completely. Right. I'm a big fan of the book. I mm-hmm. love the book. I've read the book twice, and it's a fucking long read. Yeah. And I've listened to the audiobook a couple times, too. So, And that's pretty cool, too. Um, it's a guy from Wings. Stephen Weber from Wings is reading oh, cool. it. So it's pretty cool. He was a good Jack Torrance, I thought, in the Shining miniseries. Yeah. Well, but, yeah. But, for, for oh, So, okay, so we talked about a little bit about the cast. I, I also don't like, I really don't like what they did with Henry. Because what the, the unless they do something to change, I'm not going to give away what they did. Yeah. But unless they do something to change, I mean, they they kept Henry true to the book in the sense like how he dealt with his dad and all that. Yeah. But then what happened to him in the end? Unless they find a big way to change that, it fucks up an entire subplot. For oh, the I'm sure story. it does. No, it, it does. Yeah, with the whole him going to the same asylum and all that yeah. stuff, and also like the whole thing with Belch and Patrick Hawksetter and stuff like that. Those are menacing characters because they were so fucked up. There's a whole, like, gay undertones of yeah. uh, Patrick Hawksetter, like, sucking him off and all this stuff. Yeah. And them getting caught. And that's why they want to kill the fucking Losers Club. Right. It's because he saw him being gay in the forest. And right. Stuff. And that there's none of that to be found. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing that was a huge... Yeah, they were just rendered to minor minor character thoughts. Yeah, and they were just like, oh, we're bullies. We're, we're fucking not around anymore yeah. in this plot, you know? Yeah. So, it is what it is. Uh, if you have to... So, we, we talked about casting... Talked a little bit about the writing and direction. But Which, by the way, this was written by Kerry Fukunaga, who wrote uh, True Detective. Yeah. I had no idea about that. Fucking great. Yeah. yeah and, and, and Andy Muschietti, too, nailed it out of the park yeah. with not so many credits behind his name. Yeah. To get this, he got the ball and he fucking ran with he, it. He ran like a motherfucker. He ball. ran with it and it, he delivered. And the thing is, the direction is so much better. The writing visually, is so much better. Visually, the cinematography this movie is fucking stunning. And the special effects, too. Yeah. Like, special effects, the original... Horrible, horrible. When he comes out of the drain and shit, and goes in the drain, and he's all stop motion. And, and the blood scene when the blood came out of the fucking looks like Kool Aid. We're kind of talking minor spoilers, not totally, but like everyone's seen the old it, yeah. And a lot of people I'd expect would read the book to yeah. where we'll tell you like what's good and what's bad about it. Right. And I'm not going to go fully in depth because it just came out, yeah. But at least we can give people if you're a fan of the book, if you're a fan of the miniseries. You can listen to this review and you can kind of talk. Yeah, whether if you've seen go. the miniseries, we're it's not worth it to go. You I, I, seen. Straight up, before we even give ratings or anything like that, mm-hmm. it is worth it to go yeah. see this movie. Yeah, the, and the special effects were great. And there, there was there was CG in this movie, but I thought the CG was very well done. Yeah. It looked natural. They used shadows to hide the strings, yeah. so to speak. You know, and and even at times where I was like, that has to be. Though apparently, uh, uh, Bill Skarsgård actually trained under a contortionist. To do a lot of the physical stuff that Penny awesome. was doing. Yeah, that's awesome. And apparently he can move his eyes independently of one another. That wasn't a special effect. I had read that somewhere. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he really does. You can tell he fucking he took ate up that role. You At know? 27. 27 yeah. years old. He's like, I'm going against Tim Curry. Bring it on. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. You know? Which is pretty fucking awesome. So, in the original, the opening credits were a great scene with the montage of eerie string music. And the droning piano set to pictures of the kids like a scrapbook. Yeah. And in this movie, there was you didn't get a lot of good opening credit sequence like that. Yeah, the, the credits were all at the end. Yeah, there was a little bit of a, a cold open, and then there was it. Yeah, and then kids riding the bikes and stuff. You yeah. know, like so you didn't get that. I really like that about it's. I guess after you watch the movie and you watch it again and again. With the miniseries? Yeah. Like, those credits meant a lot more to me, you know? Right. I guess they were going straight for it. We're going to grab you by the balls. We're going to fucking run with it. Yeah. You know, here's what's happening yeah. now. You know? And the leper. That's something, too, we got to talk about. Yeah. Javier Botet. Excellent. Excellent as the fucking leper, and not in the miniseries at all. Same you, with the house, too. You, the house on Evil You got a glimpse. It, it was in the adult portion, but they do a flashback. But it was the wrong kid. It was, um... 
it was. If it wasn't Eddie. It was, oh, we didn't it talk was, about it, Eddie. It, it was. It was. Oh, Eddie was great. We didn't talk about Eddie yeah. Kasprak. Too. Yeah, Eddie was great. And that's the one character we omitted. So yeah. Eddie was far and away better. Eddie was probably my favorite character yeah. of the thing. I know that a lot of people would say Richie because of his one-liners mm-hmm. and stuff, but Eddie, he really had that like. He felt like a I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm so scared. You know all the stuff. He felt just like the book, and yeah. then it was just like. Fuck you! Not anymore. Yeah, at the end, he standing up for himself. Yeah, against and he his had mom and against everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so um, he was really good. But yeah, it was in in the uh, other one. It wasn't even him. It was the the Jewish kid. What the hell is his name again? I'm totally blanking. Stan. Right now. It was Stan. Go in a flashback, going into the house, and because um, they they had the flashback of when when Bill saves him because yeah. Bill shows up on his bike. And he sees his, uh, Stan coming out of the house because he sees the leper in there for some yeah. reason. And then... And it just shows backwards camera, like, chasing yeah. him and stuff. Yeah, it and, wasn't... And the, you see the leper for, like, three seconds, but he looks more like Dark Man. He's got, like, the fedora yeah. and the long coat. And then when Stan gets on the back of Bill's bike and he's, like, scared as hell, Bill takes the second to say, hi-ho, silver, away. Yeah. Before he fucking rides away. And yeah. that just totally killed any potential horror yeah. in that scene. That's true. And you know what, too, about this one is that... What's really cool is there's a scene towards the end where Pennywise is coming down at all the kids. Yeah. You get this glimpse of it's Pennywise. It's the leper. It's, it's the Bev's painting. dad. It's everything. Yeah. It's everything that scared everyone mm-hmm. all wrapped into one. And that's what the book really was all about. Right. Instead of the fucking stupid giant spider at the end of the miniseries and yeah. everything, they can't go with turtles. They can't go with the fucking kid orgy. There's stuff in the book that yeah. they can't go with. The turtle, the turtle wouldn't make sense in the context yeah. of this movie like it does in Although, the context of Stephen King's also, universe. Something that does worry me but also sort of excite me is they are going extra dimensional in the second part two. Good, they should. He is going to... The, it exists in multiple planes. Mm-hmm. There's the, a good the, force the and a bad force and all that, and all that kind of yeah. shit. They're doing that okay. in the new one. Okay. It makes... Which, I prefer they didn't, mm. based on, I think, you know, the turtle thing, that's where the book was kind of like, okay, what's going to happen the, the turtle thing didn't make sense until I read The Dark Tower, and now I love it, but The Dark Tower movie didn't touch on any of that shit. The Dark Tower has a turtle too? Yeah. Um, they, they talk about the turtle, they don't actually show it, but they explain what the fuck the turtle is in The Dark Tower. Wow. Um, and and what Pennywise is, and what all of those those extra dimensional beings are. It's a, that's like all a huge part of the Dark Tower later yeah. in the series, uh, which I loved. But I'm going to be curious to see how they do it in this mo- in the movie to make it make sense. Definitely. And so for... the, the the thing about that scene where Pennywise was shifting between all of the the monsters. I really liked that scene because it conveyed his desperation at that point. Yeah, like he's he, trying to scare all. Yeah. If I can get any of them to believe, yeah, because they have to be scared of him. Yeah, for him to have his power. Yeah, and he's and, fucking Freddy Krueger. Yeah, and he was literally just throwing shit at the wall to see what stuck, and you can yeah. feel that it was so yeah. well done. I was like, oh, he's fucking desperate. Yeah, yeah, I really liked that, and but also at that same time too, I felt like any character could die. Like I never mm-hmm. felt like that in the miniseries. Yeah, you know? yeah, like I felt more like. You know, they're changing stuff subtly. They might kill one of these fuckers out. Yeah. I was thinking Stan was going to die. Yeah. Stan, you know, when they come... Spoiler alert, when they become adults, Stan kills himself right. rather than face a hit. Right. Again, when he's called upon. I thought maybe he would never be called upon and they would have killed him at the end. Right. I thought they were going to go there at yeah. first, too, with, like, that ending and stuff yeah. like that. They didn't, but... So, with, with all we've talked about between casting, direction, effects, everything... If we had to pick one that's better than the other, I would say, to me personally, we're only comparing kids to kids. We're not mm-hmm. comparing the whole thing. And they've chose to go linear and not flashback style, mm-hmm. which was a bold choice, but yeah. I think it was the right choice. It was. And I it's... think that although these kids, there's you know some of the kids are better than the others in the TV series, some are better than this, I have to go with the new one. Yeah. I have to put the new one above the old one. And the best, most, uh, the, the part that makes me have the most hope is the fact that the kids in the original were the very best part. The kids in Pennywise were the best part. Yeah. You take those away, it was a shit movie. It was a, it was a fucking melodrama. So, no matter what they do in the adult portion in part two, I think I'm in. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's got to be better. Yeah. They can't drop the ball so hard that the adult version of the miniseries wins. Right. Well, it, it was, was a bold choice to go straight up just the kids and do the second one as an adult, but it also gave them time to finally expand 
and really like get into the psychology of things because the other thing about the original one was like a lot of it was just here's random shit happening. I hope that and there's a director's cut of this. I hope that like 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 a five hour director's cut or a no, four hour at least director's three. cut. Yeah. Like it's two hours and ten minutes. Yeah. That's pretty long yeah. for a horror movie at the at the theaters. Yeah. You know. I think they didn't want to make it like, come see this three-hour movie, because mm-hmm. some people might be turned off. Well, you know? what, what I read on one thing is that there was a bunch of extra stuff that they shot, and they are going to incorporate that into... I know the they are. They're going to incorporate some flash, flashbacks, but mm-hmm. if it could have been three instead of two, and you could have got the background of Mike Hamlin, mm-hmm. who is my favorite character. Mike Hamlin is my favorite character in, in the book. Mm-hmm. He's my favorite character in the TV series. He is... The one to me. He's, like, the, he's the main he's character. The yeah, he makes it all work. And the fact that they didn't give Mike his due in this, that's where they went wrong to me. Yeah. It's the only thing, if they would have done that better, give Mike a little bit more backstory, let him be the historian, not Ben. Yeah. Ben was fine. Ben did perfect. Yeah. You know, and he didn't, he didn't need, need that. Yeah, he didn't need it. All they had to do was give Mike the thing and say, yeah, my family's lived here and let him do his report. Yeah. And it would have been better. Yeah. And not be the farm. Mike's relationship with his dad in the book... He, he quotes his dad constantly. Yes, and he loves his dad. Yeah, and in the in the new movie, he has a grandfather a he doesn't asshole. like. Yeah, his, da- his, his dad's dead, and his grandfather's yeah, an asshole. Yeah, so, yeah, and the whole like mind collapsing and the burden and stuff like yeah. that. If you were to give me like thirty more minutes of this movie, make it two hour forty five minutes, I would give it a straight ten out of ten. Yeah, if I got would have got Mike. Yeah, and and not the fish mouth. Yeah, not the. Uh, what do you call it from Beetlejuice? Sandworm. <laughs> no sandworm. <laughs> yeah, no sandworm mouth for Pennywise. A little bit more dialogue for Pennywise. Yeah. Because yeah. I think Bill Skarsgård hold, held it up with oh, his dialogue. I, he was I, very I, menacing yeah. in his delivery. I think that if he, he would have got... He and he had like this boyish quality to him. Yeah. He looked like cute, scary. Yeah. Like his face, like he wasn't like... Tim Curry's terrifying. Yeah, to look t- at. T- Tim Curry looked like but a carny. He had like a, a carny who would rape you. You know what it was? <laughs> is that Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise had a, like a twinkle in his eye, yeah. like a youthful twinkle, yeah. spark in his eye. Like the way that he smiled like, was childish. Yeah. He had like like chubby this button cheeks nose. Kind of, yeah, yeah. button nose. Like he's like, oh. Yeah, until yeah. until he got evil. Then he yeah. got fucking evil. So, if I have to choose between the two, I'll go with the new one, definitely. Yeah, and sure. I can't wait to. Watch it again when it comes out and dissect it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I, I will be seeing it a second time um, in the theater. Yeah, because Michelle wasn't able yeah. to go with me and she wants to see it. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm I have never been as excited to go back and see a movie in the theater a second time as I am to see this a second time since like I don't know since I was in high school. Yeah, I, if I would have woken up the next morning, if what I could do right when I woke up was just watch it again, that's mm-hmm. what I would have done. Yeah. That's how good it is. Yeah, I so. think the last time I was ex- this excited to see a movie in the theater for the second time was when um, Event Horizon came out, and yeah. I worked in the movie theater and I didn't have to pay to see movies. So like, I just I, I think I saw that movie in the theater like five times. That's all. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we hope you guys like the first ever reanimated reviews, and this will be something that we do in the future. As there will be remakes coming out. There will be and Halloween's and, um, coming soon, and this is the thing. Like, we're gonna start this segment on a high note. Yeah. And from now on, there's only down from here. It can only get worse from here. We we raised that bar too high. <laughs> yeah. So we will be back. Speaking of raising your bar. Oh, <laughs> good segue. We're, we're going to be back with our top five awkward boners. Yeah. Yeah. I have one right now. Hi. Thanks for listening to Postmortem. We need money. Yeah, we have no advertising budget. We don't want your money. We want you to share this shit. Tell a friend. Tell an enemy. It doesn't matter. Tell your grandma. Tell, Tell your, your grandmother. Grandma. <laughs> Tell your dog. If he's like my dog, he might be interested. Yeah, that's right. We talk a lot about dogs on this show. <laughs> we do. We're, we're a horror slash pet podcast. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so spread the shit around. If you guys get a chance, give us a rating on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube. Leave us a review. Hopefully it's five stars. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you want more of. And share this fucker so we can get more ear holes and get that good advertising money so we can use it. I need drugs. Tom needs drugs. Drugs. He needs to refill his prescription. These are legal prescribed drugs. That's right. I got a prescription. And I need crack. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, you guys. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. We appreciate all your emails. And uh, hopefully next week we'll have another real sponsor. We'll be re-recording these old messages. That sponsor could be you. That sponsor could be you, so send us your shit. We're easy. 
Fucking Screambox. Fuck you, Screambox. Fuck you in the face. Yeah, or Shutter. I can't remember which one it was. Either one. Fucking it. both. Fuck you. Dicks. Anyways, thanks for listening to Post Mortem. Hey, we're back with the top five awkward boners. Boy, oy, oy, oy. Boy, oy, oy. So the theme of this, we just gave you our top five sexiest. Yeah. And what we talked about was that no, we're not going to go there. We're not going to say the funny stuff. The funny stuff. We're not going to say it's sexy when it's obviously not. Yeah. We're going to save that for one more week. It's a ten. It's not a five. It's a ten list. <laughs> now we're giving you the fucked up ones. Yeah. A lot of mine were kind of fucked up anyway. <laughs> but, but like fucked up in like a dangerous sort of way as opposed to fucked up like physically fucked up all of mine have at least given me a half chub or more all of mine are in wheelchairs okay. <laughs> handicap kind of capable boner that's right <laughs> all right so i'm gonna start us off with my number five right. awkward boner a little movie come out a couple years ago called Hostel 2. There's a scene where a gorgeous woman is in a bathtub with a scythe, slitting the throat of a dorky young woman. And and trust me, this woman in the in the bathtub lapping up the blood, touching herself in her nether regions, gorgeous tits, gorgeous face, amazing looking, right? But also, the girl from Welcome to the Dollhouse. Is the one she's shut. He's she's slitting her throat with a scythe. That's right. And yeah. also her tits are out. Yeah. So no matter how hot the fucking killer girl with the scythe was, I still had to see. Welcome to the dollhouse. That girl naked. And it still aroused you. No, it's like cognitive dissonance. It was, it was so so like awkward boners to me are like okay. So you ever bang a girl, but you're like half hard because you're not even into it, but right. you're still. You're still doing it. You're yeah. still pumping away. They don't know the difference. Right. So you're just like, uh, uh, I'm too drunk. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Dollhouse. What's that girl's name? Don Wiener. Don Wiener. <laughs> From Welcome to the Dollhouse. Yeah. She matured and I saw her boobs and I never wanted to see them. <laughs> you weren't on that train? I wasn't I on that I think my train. brain blocked them out. I don't even remember. I, I mean, I yeah. remember the scene, but... yeah. You remember the hot girl drinking yeah. the blood? Yeah, I remember that. And shit yeah, like I that. remember that for sure. Very arousing. Yeah, but the fact that it's Don Wiener from Welcome to the Dollhouse, <laughs> one of the most awkward movies ever. Yeah, and a little girl who I felt so much for, like I was rooting in her corner in Welcome to the Dollhouse. So it's almost like it's almost like when you're jerking off and then your sister walks in and she's naked. That's horrible. <laughs> I'm glad I have no brother or sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> number five, Don. My number five. Is uh, from quite possibly one of the worst movies ever made. But it's a horror movie, sort of. Okay. Troll 2, the character of Credence, the gob- the, the, the Goblin Queen. Is that Julie Louis Dreyfus? The, yeah, well, the actress is Deborah Reed. but uh, Oh, she's in that movie, too, though. Uh, the girl from Seinfeld's in Troll. Is she? Yeah. I never, I never put she's that She's the one that has like the plants on her and stuff. No, that's that. her. Really? Yeah, the, her, her name is Deborah Reed. It's not Julia Louis Dreyfus. Looks like her kind of though. She's in that movie. Some maybe know. she's someone else. Maybe she's someone else. But yeah, Deborah Reed's been in a lot of other horror movies. I got a I got a boner for Elaine though. Yeah, Seinfeld. I've never actually seen an episode of Seinfeld. Really? Yeah. Never seen Seinfeld. Never saw Friends. I didn't have cable for like half Friends, my life. Friends is bullshit, but Seinfeld is Larry David. Yeah. Have you seen Curb Your Enthusiasm? Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Then you would like Seinfeld. Okay. This is the same writer. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, it's it's a more mainstream version of Curb Your Enthusiasm, but it's definitely worth a watch if okay. you haven't seen it. So. Give it a look sometime. But Credence. Deborah if Reed you is... don't watch Seinfeld, you're an anti-Semite. Oh, shit. I better go watch it now. <laughs> Show's over. <laughs> my, my The social justice warrior in me must postpone the rest of this episode. <laughs> yeah, you have to watch at least the yeah. Super Nazi episode. I, I, I have to go watch Seinfeld and punch like 17 Nazis. <laughs> Um, anyway, Credence is played by Deborah Reed. Deborah Reed is a very attractive woman. She's been in a lot of other movies uh, post Troll Two, but in Troll Two, she's kind of like painted up like this nasty, mossy witch who's kind of like half decayed and fucked up. And I call this the Mama's Family effect. It is both of them. She's Julia Louis Dreyfus is in too. She's the good one that has the plants on her. Oh, shirt. okay. I'm thinking about the evil one. Yeah, the okay. good one. 
Is Elaine from Seinfeld? Okay. I want to put my hands through her curly, thick black hair. <laughs> through her moss. I'll buy her some soup any day. <laughs> yes, soup for her. Yes. So. Boner soup. <laughs> Man soup. <laughs> Man chowder. <laughs> Continue. Yeah, uh, Creedence has what I call the mama's family effect, where you know that the actress under the hideous makeup is attractive. And so you kind of like are looking through the hideous makeup to see the attractive parts of the actress. Well, like when like, you watch like watching scrambled porn. Like when you watch exactly, Monster yeah, same with Charlize thing. Theron. Yeah. That's why we say she took her jerbs. Yeah. Because she's hot as fuck in real life. Yeah. They had to hire the hottest woman in the world. And make her ugly. And make her ugly to play the role. Give the, give the ugly girl a bone. Yeah. Just give her a little nibble. Yeah, toss Let her it. have the role. The, the, this was their there opportunity. There was a woman, I guarantee that's an actor that was born to play that role. Yeah. Physically. Yeah. So yeah, and and she she will never get another part. It's like the, the the Tom Waits line. I don't need no makeup. I got real scars. We're gonna, uh, we would go with you, but you know you look too much like Eileen Wuornos. God damn it, not again! <laughs> it wasn't Eileen Wuornos the part. <laughs> yeah, but you're scaring us. <laughs> we think you, you might this, actually be her. <laughs> you still have those same looping dead eyes. <laughs> My number four. Little movie called Society. Yeah, the shunting. The shunting. shunting. Yeah, the combination of orifices, limbs, some kind of gelatin yeah. substance. Yeah, melding together. Yeah, where people are becoming one, and also fucking. Yeah, it's very strange. It's, but you, there's a dis- there's a nipple or two. Yeah, it. it's disgusting, and you know that shit feels good. Yeah, <laughs> it's the way that they sell it. Like, uh, yeah, like uh, it's like sex on ecstasy. Yeah, but you have to. Like, merge your face with your own butthole to make it happen. Yeah. That's a, that's yeah. a heavy price to pay. It's a price to pay, but, I mean, if, if you're going to get that feeling forever, I'll shunt, I'll shunt away. <laughs> shunt away, young man. Shuntomania is running wild. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> uh, my number four, Silent Hill, The Nurses. Oh, yes. That's what you call a brown bagger. Yeah. Yeah, from the neck down, they've got great bodies, they've got the sexy nurse's outfit, and then their face looks like someone just stuck a wooden spoon in it and stirred it around. Hey, well, it's covered up by bandages, so. though. Kind of, but there's like some like you skin distortion see. in there, too. It's all it like, looks fucked like up. It looks like, um, you know, if you ever have some leftover stroganoff, but you don't have a Tupperware, yeah. and all you have is gauze bandages, yeah. and you just kind of like loop it around the stroganoff yeah. to keep it... From the elements. And then you have sex with it. <laughs> <laughs> sex that's, what, that's, what's, that's what's getting a blowjob from one of those nurses. Okay, is like, I, I only have a few more shows, right, to yeah, wrestle. Yeah. I am now, for, for the, the next two shows, I'm the sexual stroganoff, J.D. Horror. <laughs> Done. I am the sexual stroganoff. <laughs> Good, I like that. <laughs> Laying down and right as they say sexual stroganoff, I'm going to do that little hip grind dance <laughs> like Val Venus. The brick house. The... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sexual stroganoff. You can call me the strokes. What up, strokes? <laughs> <laughs> we'll make you some entrance music. It's like the American male's music. <laughs> I, I'm going to come out. I'm going to walk out. sexual stroganoff. No, I'm, I'm going to walk out. I'm going to be all, what up, y'all? And everyone's going to be like, what up, strokes? <laughs> And I'll be like, yeah, damn right. You know it. Sexual. Top me with some mushrooms. I'm delicious. <laughs> I got a long noodle. <laughs> <laughs> what up, y'all? What up, strokes? <laughs> now you have to do it. The whole the whole building at once. What up, strokes? <laughs> with the point of the finger and everything. Everyone. <laughs> Yeah. Madison Square and, Garden. And me like, yeah. You know what? It, that, that's going to work so good that you're not going to be able to retire. <laughs> I'll be signed to WWE in yeah. no time. Number three. Number three for me. There was... I, I can't remember a rack that I wanted to see any more than a little movie called Night of the Demons 2. Mm-hmm. She teases you with you the whole time. She's got this smoky, sexy voice. She's obviously a slut. She talks about being a slut. Finally, finally, you get to see her boobs for a split second before they turn into hands and grab onto someone and... Fuck them up. Fucking destroy them like acid. Yeah. The boob hands. Night of the Demons too. 
Tit Hands McGee. <laughs> Tit Hands McGee. I, I, you know what? That's the thing about that's good about a VCR compared to DVD. I could pause that split second right. when it was still boob before it turned to ham. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You couldn't do that Very in the theater. Wide. I said, "What up, boobs?" And they're all, "What up, strokes?" <laughs> <laughs> the hand waved to me. It's like, what up, Strokes? <laughs> All right. My number three, speaking of wheelchairs, from Dagon, Usha, Macarena Gomez. She's got those weird big eyes, but she's oh, still kind of attractive. Yeah. You know, she's got her shirt off, she's got nice boobs, and then they kind of pan down a little bit, and the lower half of her body's a fucking fish. And it's not like just like a mermaid. I I was going to put it on my top five, but I put it to my honorable mentions because I figured you were going to go there. Dagon! 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 With her big creepy eyes and her <laughs> barnacle covered vagina. What up, fish? What up, drugs? <laughs> Dagon! <laughs> Strogana! <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we're going dark places. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in my barnacle strokes. <laughs> what are you doing over there? You're struggling off. Get it? Stro- yeah, struggling off. Struggling off. Yeah, struggling off. That's let's, good. Let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> my number two The Shining. A beautiful woman. Into a bathtub. <laughs> Comes out as the most decaying, disgusting old woman. With the seventies bush. The old wish from the shining. I love the bush. I'm okay with the with the with the bush, you know, every time I see a bush, you know. Even if there's every like time I get a, skin hanging. Every time from I it. bed down a young lady and I say, Hey, I start to take those buttons down, start to peel away the panties. Like <laughs> so much unused skin. And then I say, What up, Bush? <laughs> And the bush is all, what up, folks? <laughs> Waving in the breeze. Waving in the breeze. Sexual struggle. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to one-track mine. Yeah. As soon as we're done recording, I'm going to go make some stroganoff. Right. <laughs> and beat off right into <laughs> right it. Right in the living room. Share it with my wife. Yeah. We're going to eat it together. Okay. Good. Good. We it's have good lightning to storms here. It's, it's fucking share. pouring rain. Yeah. The sky's yeah. like a fucking strobe light right now. I've it's never seen crazy. it like that here. So yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to let us, ourselves a fire. We're going to share a romantic meal. Have have some some nice romantic <laughs> nuptial stroganoff. Sexual stroganoff. <laughs> uh, my number two. One of the Masters of Horror episodes, Jennifer. Oh, yeah. Actress Carrie Fleming, again, great body, conveys sexuality in her physical presence. Just the way that she moves, and the way that she stalks, and the way that she approaches men. And then there's that face. And it looked like it looks like someone just hit her upside the head with a shovel. And, you know, she's probably also mentally retarded. Um, which makes that even more awkward because what do you do when like a smoking hot retard comes on to you? Uh, what do you do when that happens? Uh, smoking hot retard comes on to me. Yeah, I come on her. All right, that's my response. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, that's, just, that makes me sound like a horrible person. <laughs> just just, sure. just the phrase "smoking hot retard." <laughs> <laughs> I gotta punch myself that's for saying na- that. That's the name of this episode: <laughs> "Smoking Hot Retards." <laughs> Top five awkward boners, <laughs> <laughs> and we are banned from YouTube. <laughs> I wonder if "smoking hot retards" is a porn. Probably, there's got to be something out there with that. It's just retarded people smoking cigarettes, yeah. jacking off people with their feet, <laughs> <laughs> giving them a fucking what do you call a Wyoming. It's it, there, there's not even sex involved. They're just like sitting too close to a heater, smoking cigarettes, <laughs> smoking hot uh, retard. If you action. guys haven't, so if, if you're a new listener, this is your um, first episode. If this ever. is your first episode, or if you're just a new listener in general. Um, so as the show goes on we have terms like wyoming and to give someone a wyoming means to jack someone off with your feet yep. so the more you know dun 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 that's where we're at right now ding, ding, ding. listen to the old episodes yeah. you'll you'll know it all 
And don't be turned off by our smoking Please hot retard yourself. banter. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't kill yourself after you binge listen to 81 <laughs> episodes of Postmortem. <laughs> so, my number one. My number one is not an awkward boner because the woman isn't hot. There's nothing bad happening other than after she fucks you. If you can't make her come, she's going to kill you. And I fucking hate Nazis. I fucking hate Nazis, but Ilsa, she wolf of the SS. Yeah. Yep. I like just I, I flick my boner whenever I watch her. I'm like, don't get hard. Stop, Stop it. it. Down. I actually, Down. I actually punch yourself flicked, in the dick. I actually flicked my dick right now by accident. Oh. I was pantomiming and it went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> when pantomime goes wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, she's fucking smoking hot. Diane Thorne, yeah. Ilsa, she wolf of the SS. Unsimulated sex scenes, terrible fucking sexual tortures and stuff. But she's got those boobs. Yeah, yeah. Like from another planet. Yeah, I, the only one that can compare is my wife. I saw my wife's boobs and I was like, Elsa. And she's not even a Nazi. Um, she plays one on TV. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my number one, someone that I've talked about quite a bit on the show, I think. But she still stands tall, an actress that has only ever had one role in one movie ever. Shauna Lawyer, The Angry Princess, 13 Ghosts. That's, she's, that's her only fucking movie? Yep. Poster girl for necrophilia. Oh, yeah. She's walking around, dead as hell, fucked up eyes, that's, knife scars all over her body. That's not that awkward of a boner, though. She's super hot. You're, you're not supposed to be attracted to, like, blue... Dead women with you tell me when I you 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 know what you want to tell me that you want to tell me how to live my life just show me in a text show me in in a a tomb a book as they say show me in a book where it says you can't get hot you can't get fucking attracted to hot dead women with big titties that's a book I want to burn yeah yeah true yeah yeah. I'm going on the Last Crusades, Indiana Jones style. I'm burning those books. 1984, <laughs> going Orwell on those books. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to burn those books. <laughs> I touch me, you shall be reading books instead of burning them. <laughs> yep, that's my awkward, my awkward boner. So, before I get to my honorable mentions, there's a number zero. Okay. A little movie called Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> the end of that movie. Yeah. The first ever. I don't. I don't want to say these terms. The FBI is gonna find us, but there's a tiny little dick on top of a little girl. It's silly. It's funny. <laughs> it's a fun time. Good it's like Carl Wynn pin the tiny dick on the little girl. Going ah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a novelty game. You can buy it, you know, yeah. at any Spencer's. Pin the tiny dick on the little girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. <Yeah. laughs> I feel horrible. I, I just, this might be the last episode. Never. You just I'm can't gonna, do it anymore. I'm just going to go out and hold the fucking flagpole and run into the fucking lightning right now. And <laughs> just die. You no, know, next episode, it's Dom and his co host, Powder. <laughs> <laughs> as, as long as. Fucking Victor Salva isn't coming by. I'm I have okay to wear my sunglasses <laughs> at night. Every time you get worked up, you start conveying electricity and <laughs> lights explode. I'm like Ernest from Ernest Goes to Jail. <laughs> <Ooh-ah>. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's definitely a joke for my number zero. Don't take that the wrong way. I think it's pretty funny. So. <laughs> my next honorable mention, definitely not a joke. Buffalo Bill's tucking dance from Sound. Like <laughs> I remember being a little kid and being like, "Wow, that woman has a sensual dance." Be like, "Yeah, I'd fuck you too." Yeah. <laughs> Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. I'd put some lotion on its penis and then it fucks me. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Blair from Repossess. Yeah, she was an adult at that point. Yeah. You know, I always remember Little Regan from The Exorcist, yeah. but in in Repossessed, I was right about the time that she started doing like penthouse spreads and yeah. stuff where you could see her titties. Yeah, and she looked good, and she is fucking hot. She is definitely hot. So she she blossomed, she bloomed into quite she a woman. Did something that blo- girl, <laughs> you'll be a woman soon. <laughs> something that overbloomed, got a little bit too big in the britches. 
Mama Vera from Dead Alive. <laughs> the end of Dead Alive. Yeah. They're giant balloon titties. Yeah. You're so a boob man. You like, like the big. I you like, like the big swinging titties. I like the boobs. I like the butt too. And she had both. Yeah. 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 Her butt was like two Volkswagens parked against each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, American Werewolf in Paris Julie Delpy has a scene where she takes off her shirt She's riding the dude She takes off her shirt Like it shows her boob It cuts back She has six boobs She has dog nipples That's right Dog tits And, and that was the instant like Oh I'm almost oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Daniel Harris from Hatchet and Halloween Whenever I see that, My like, next couple honorable mentions It's like Daniel Harris got so fucking hot. Yeah, she did. But I remember Halloween 4. Just a little girl in a clown suit. Yeah. So that's fucking really weird. I might have been that young too at the time. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. She's our age. Yeah. But the thing is, like, now I see her now. I'm like, boy, yo, yo. Yeah. Clown suit. And then I just punch myself in the dick. Huh! Huh! But you say clown suit and it gets harder. And then it punches you back. <laughs> It wraps around my hand, it wraps around my throat like poltergeist. <laughs> now I'm gonna jerk you off. <laughs> yeah, and and just go, just going with that theme. Um, Christina Ricci in fucking uh, Sleepy Hollow, especially Buffalo '66 in Buffalo and and Black Psych Moon, but Buffalo '66 she looks fucking amazing. I have not nice seen Buffalo '66. Oh, she looks, she's like super hot. Though. Uh-huh. But she was Wednesday Adams in Adams Family, so it's hard for me to fucking. It's a paradox. Yeah, you know. Well, again, she's our age. She grew up with us, so it's not. It's not like you're being a pedophile and perving on her when she was Wednesday Adams. That's true, but something that uh, is not our age because it's not actually alive. But another awkward boner for me: inappropriate sex act bear from The Shining. <laughs> a bear and an old man. Yeah. Have a little tryst in the night. Yeah. They're viewed. Ships crossing. Ships crossing <laughs> Ships in the Ships crossing in the night. Kuso. <laughs> uh, the you, whole movie did, of Kuso. <laughs> did you want to have a moment with that bear? In <laughs> the whole movie of Kuso. Yeah, Kuso is uh, definitely... The, I wouldn't say this gives me a boner, but it's there's a lot of awkward boners in this movie. Yeah. The Greasy Strangler. <laughs> <laughs> Long pointed dicks. Yeah. Necromantic. That's an awkward boner. In that is an itself. awkward boner. I remember yeah. seeing that skeleton in that woman. Yeah. And being like in sixth grade and yeah. just being like, she's what's naked. Going on? I don't know what's, what's going, going on. on. She's raping a skeleton, but she's raping me too. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so I think Under Siege is the first time I ever saw boobs in a movie. Right. Steven Seagal Under Siege when she pops out. When you saw Steven Seagal's tits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, These are my boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I have a particular set of skills. I'm a chef. These are my boobs. <laughs> the Raft in Creepshow 2. I saw that right around the same time yeah. as Under Siege. The Raft. He pulls her over, you know, you finally get to see those boobs. She turns, her face is fucking melting. Terrified me as a child. Yeah. It's like I had a three quarter boner still, though, even after being terrified. Right. The Fish Lady from Dagon, like you said. And my last aw- awkward boner. Doug Jones. In general? Just Doug Jones. <laughs> Gives me an awkward boner. What are your honorable mentions? All right. My Besides first... sexy strokes. Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> what up, strokes? <laughs> so, uh, the Angelique Cenobite from Hellraiser Bloodlines. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Should have been on my list. She uh, could have actually been on my top five sexiest. Yeah, honestly, not. But you know, when she turns into the Cenobite and her head split she open, cut my head off in the mirror all day long. Um, Either one. I have Christina Ricci on my list also, but okay. not from one that you mentioned from the movie Afterlife. Oh yeah, she's dead. She's got so, a lion in her the one, chest. What's the one with uh, her too? Where she? It's like a movie where she's on a bunch of pills and shit. It's the first time she ever showed her tits before Afterlife. I don't know. Something in America or something like that. Huh. Uh, what's the... Paxil or... Something like that. Anyways, look it up. Okay. Christina Ricci, IMDb. It exists. Uh, yeah, in, in Afterlife, you know, it's Christina Ricci. She's someone that we grew up thinking was hot. Even, you know, we were kids. I, I was a kid. She was a kid. I was like, oh, she's cute. Not just that, but she was like the ideal version of a woman. Yeah. With how Wednesday Adams was. Yeah. You know, when you're a kid and she's a kid too, you're yeah. like... I have a chance she's at this. so cool. No, she's just so cool. The thing she says, like, yeah. 
Jeff. Yeah. You know? Now. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, you know, in, in Afterlife, she's naked the whole movie. But she's also got a Y incision in her chest and is supposedly dead. So you're like, oh, you know, like if I bang her with the incision bust open, what a bunch so of The death fall doesn't out? bother me. It's just the fact that I knew her as a kid. Yeah. You know? I'm down with the sawdust. You're down with it? Yeah. <laughs> you call my whole private area the wood shop. <laughs> <laughs> Regurgitated sacrifice, black angels of hell, also known as the Soska sisters. Definitely. Yeah. Incest. Just, just vomit gore as a whole. There's yeah. some, you know, there's questionable, you know, um, some of them are horrible and I would never want to have sexual relations with them. Yeah. Some of them are, though. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. He, so. he does He does find some attractive actresses. You know, and, and I actually didn't even realize the first time that, uh, I, the first couple of times I saw Regurgitated Sacrifice that the Black Angels, Angels of Hell were the Soska sisters. Because it was, you know, they, they look different now. Like, you know, yeah. it was almost ten years ago that that movie came yeah. out, you know. But, uh, you know, they're attractive and then they start making out with each other. And you're like, I don't think I should be watching this. Yeah. <laughs> But you do. You continue. There's to watch a lot of it. simulation of that, though, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're connected at the head and yeah. all that shit. Yeah. Very strange. Um, she, she probably next next one would have been actually on my list. Might have even been my number one, but it made the non awkward boners list last time, so I wasn't going to go there again. And that's Julie Walker from Return of the Living Dead Three. Oh yeah. You know, not awkward boner at all. Well, I mean, she's bloody and she's got like. Shit sticking out of her. St- yeah, you know, spikes sticking out of her. I'm and, down. Yeah, you know, but uh, it's like makeup to me. Yeah, and when and, a corpse has shit sticking out of it, yeah, that's like uh, when I see that, I'm like, it's a fine woman walking down Hollywood Boulevard. It's like she put in some work. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, I saw Return of the Living Dead three. There's another one that I saw in my formative years when I first was interested in women, and I wondered, do all boobs have safety pins in them? Really. <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, my like going to Office Depot every day trying to see tits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Staples. Uh, Krusty from August Underground Mortem and Penance. Yeah. She's nasty as fuck. She is. Like, we but, talk about, like, dirty, sexy girls, like, uh, Pretty Durango. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah. She's dirtier than sexy. She's going to give you a disease. Yeah. You don't even have to have sex with her. She's just going <laughs> to give it to you. If you're just in the same room. Yeah. She breathes on you, man. Yeah. You are fucked. Uh, and my last one is the finger bang scene in Cabin Fever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the shaving the leg scene, too. Yeah. yeah. Very sensual yeah. until it happens. And so. you, you know what's going to happen before it happens. Yeah. And there's such a build-up to it. And yeah. it's, it's like porn, man. It's like porn with a money shot. You know, you know that money, money shot's shot coming eventually. Blood. Yeah. And uh, Eli Roth delivered it. He did. So, we hope you've enjoyed our top five awkward boners. So... Next time we're walking down the street, if you make eye contact with me, any of our listeners, just be like, what up, bro? (laughs) And I'll be like, what up? That's how you know. That's how you know. I hope Vince McMahon is listening right now, and he picks this up, and he signs you. Yeah, no, he'd just steal my gimmick. Yeah, he would. We're repackaging Roman Reigns. (laughs) His name is going to be the sexual stroganoff. It's going to be tremendous. The strobes. So? <laughs> Sexual strokes. <laughs> <laughs> Control the world. <laughs> so, as H.P. Lovecraft once said, as he went into the kitchen and he got some sour cream and some noodles and some garlic, <laughs> and he mixed it all together in a pot, and he got it nice and creamy, and he slipped on into it. If it smells like fish, throw the fucker back. What up, Strokes? <laughs> and now, a Russian dance in honor of my new Stroganoff. Hey! 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 You fall for new Hamburger Helper Stroganoff, too. It starts with your hamburger, then adds enriched egg noodles, creamy sauce, and a special final step. Real sour cream mix. For an authentic Stroganoff taste your family will love. Hamburger Helper! New Stroganoff! Hey, thanks a great deal! It's a lot better than by dancing. <laughs>